Mommy issues, daddy issues, unresolved trauma. There's so much that we need to talk about from a licensed therapist perspective in regards to Unprisoned season two on Hulu. Hey, hey, everybody. If you are new, welcome to my channel. Hey. But if you're a returning subscriber, you already know how my review videos go. Disclaimer, there will be spoilers in this video. So if you have not watched season two of Unprisoned, press pause, er, go on over to Hulu, binge watch it. It's eight episodes. They're only like 30 minutes each. And then come back because we got to chat about it in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts on season two of Unprisoned. What did you think about Paige, her dad, her son, Nadine, all of the people? We, we got some stuff to chat about. Let me know in the comment section. The first thing that we have to talk about is compounded trauma and triggers. Unresolved issues in regards to unprisoned and just in life in general is a real thing. So that means if you don't deal with your stuff and then you something else happens and you don't deal with that and then something else happens and then now you just have a stack, a tower of deep issues that have been unresolved and you are going to put yourself in a position where it's going to eventually explode at some point. And this goes for big stuff and small stuff. It doesn't matter if you don't deal with your issues, they will come back to haunt you essentially. And we see this in a major way with Paige. In my first review that I did on season one, if you haven't checked that out, go ahead and check it out. I'm gonna link it up here so y'all can get into it. And in the description, but Paige had mommy issues because her mom abandoned her, left her, didn't, she didn't know what the heck was going on. And then she also had some major daddy issues because her dad was in and out of her life. He was in prison. He would come back, not keep his promises, be doing drug stuff related, like doing things he shouldn't be doing. So she experienced double abandonment, double rejection issues. Now, a lot of us have one or the other, like, whoo, my mama was trash, but you know, my daddy was good or my daddy was horrible, but my mama saved me. When you have both and, that's tough. And if we're honest, those unresolved mommy and daddy issues billowed all the way on over to her romantic relationship. This is why her interaction, her relationship with Mal was so jacked up because she was scared that he was also going to leave her too, even if she didn't say that. And this is why we see generational trauma and things happening in this series because she started projecting that onto her son he became all anxious. Then his relationship with his grandpa was skewed and his relationship with his own daddy was skewed because she was trying to protect him so much because she didn't want him to be abandoned. But it was just her issues building on over to him because triggers are real. Her daddy being in her house, living with her, even though she invited him back, it's triggering her, it's bringing up old memories, it's bringing up times where he wasn't available, it's bringing up times where he went to jail and was absent, it's bringing up times where he was doing sketchy stuff and so she looking at his behavior like, hold on, I remember this when I was three, five, 10, you did this back then, but you're doing it now, hold on, what's going on here? I don't necessarily think that triggers are a bad thing, but it's a way for us to acknowledge that something is still bothering us, even when we thought we've dealt with it, or sometimes we've already dealt with it and you know life is throwing us a curveball and a test to see if you've really survived and healed from that particular thing. I'm just here to tell you guys, you don't have to be perfect. So if you're experiencing triggers of any kind for any reason, don't just think, oh God, woe is me, I suck, I'm not getting better. No, that's not the case at all. It just means that you're a real life human being you make mistakes, you're not perfect, but you can acknowledge that there was a trigger. But what you do after the trigger really matters. Are you going down a downward spiral? Are you engaging in negative behaviors, setbacks and patterns and you going backwards? Or are you saying, okay, I recognize this is triggering the heck out of me right now. I'm going to make a conscious decision to shift and change and do something in a more positive way. And this is why that whole wrestling scene, that wrestling match, that was a very beautiful, well, not beautiful, but y'all know what I'm trying to say. It was a very interesting depiction of how generational trauma and generational issues happen. You know, like Paige and her dad was having a wrestling match and then that allowed her son to hop in and tag in and then Nadine popped in and then Mal came. Like all of these different scenarios are interconnected. It's not just an isolated situation, but it happens and there's residual effects that impact everybody in the whole entire family unit. The second thing that we have to talk about is that therapy 
therapists are human too. Y'all have this perception that therapists are perfect, that their lives are perfect. And because Paige in this series is an NFT, also a marriage and family therapist like me, y'all think that we have perfect marriages or perfect relationships or perfect relationships with our children or our extended family. And that's not the case at all. We are human just like you. We go through the same things that you experience and y'all shouldn't be putting us on a pedestal. A lot of us have gotten into this field because of our own issues. I got into this field because of my own drama, my own family drama, my own family issues. And that's the case for a lot of other therapists too. So just like with y'all and y'all got a job, Therapy and being a therapist is a job for us. That doesn't make us perfect or godlike. Because I know personally, even for me, people have a hard time understanding the fact that I am a licensed marriage and family therapist, but I'm not currently married. People are like, that's impossible, boo, boo, boo. And I'm like, I don't know about y'all, but I have never allowed my relationship status to determine my purpose. I can be single, married, divorced, widowed, it wouldn't matter. I would still be a marriage and family therapist helping y'all through content, books, and beyond. I would have something to say about anybody. If I was divorced, y'all would be like, ooh, don't listen to her. Now that I'm single, y'all like, ooh, don't listen to her. It's just like, people are gonna talk regardless, but when you are doing the thing that God put you on the face of this earth to do, none of the fluff and the talk that y'all are saying about me and our profession matters. Before I move on to my next point, did y'all realize the whole therapist versus coach debate? Maybe it's just because I am in the field, but we know that Paige is a licensed therapist, but the therapist that they were going to wasn't technically really a therapist. He was more so of a coach. And I think it depicted what is happening in our generation right now, where everybody named mama want to be coaches. I have no problem and no shade against any of the coaches, but there's just this debate of like, some of the coaches are trying to act like therapists and they really don't have that skill set. So there is an ongoing thing that's happening in regard to therapists versus coaches. And we see that with the therapy session and also the opening scene when Paige was on the TV show with the dude and she was sitting on the couch and he was reading her and challenging her. We saw that dynamic there too. The third thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about real quick is starting over or second chances. We seen forgiveness and allowing somebody to come back into your life and giving them another shot and opportunity multiple times throughout all of these episodes. We seen Paige and her dad get reconciled for real. We seen Finn and his dad kind of get reconciled, right? We also seen Nadine and Paige going through their situation and trying to mend that relationship. We seen Finn and grandpa second chance on that because he felt like he wasn't in his grandchild's life because he was in prison for so long. We also see Paige and Mile as well getting reconnected and trying again and giving it another shot. He broke up with his whole girlfriend to get back with Paige. Okay. I love that there was a lot of ownership. I love that there was a lot of apologies being made and people trying to right their wrongs and rectify that. Because a lot of times we just think, oh, we just gonna push past this, scoop this under the rug, sweep it under the rug and just get on. But it's just like, no, 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 no. I have to acknowledge that thing that happened so we can repair this relationship and moving forward. Sometimes it's not worth the repair, but in this series, it is. And there's been so many different dynamics of forgiveness and apologies and second chances and giving people another shot when they truly mean it, they truly deserve it, and they truly want to make the relationship work. The fourth thing that we have to talk about is backsliding and regression. We've seen multiple times where people were improving upon a thing and then they would backtrack. We've seen this very clearly with Finn. Remember, he's kind of more anxious. Maybe he has generalized anxiety disorder. He doesn't really like being around people or having like this social anxiety. It drains him. He's laying on the carpet like, uh, I don't want to people anymore. <laughs> and we see him doing better and trying and making friends and doing those things for a little while. But then the anxiety heightens and it goes back, especially when his dad didn't show up and become present in his life at Christmas time. So it kind of made him backtrack a little bit. So he stayed in his room, he was isolating, he didn't want to be around people anymore. It was just too much for him. And this isn't an ideal situation, you know? Like you don't want to backtrack, you make all of this progress and it's kind of like, you take what they say, you take uh, one step forward and two step backwards. That isn't what you want to do. That isn't typical or ideal, but it is very common. It happens with us. It's happened with me. I think I'm progressing in an area and then I'm like, wait, 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 wait. I thought I was doing better in this. Oh, shoot. 
I, I took a few steps back. Let me get back on track. So as long as you acknowledge it, you have a desire to move forward and you want to do better and be better. I think there's nothing wrong with backsliding or regressing as long as you know that you're not going to stay in that state, that you want to move forward and you're going to put one step in front of the other every single time. And as I always say, small progress is still progress. Them little baby steps matter. The fifth thing that we have to talk about before I give my predictions on season three and my final thoughts is identity. We've seen sexual identity being explored or racial identity being explored. We've seen Paige kind of have a moment with her ex college roommate Kiki or whoever came in town, they reconnected, I guess back in college days, they almost kissed or had some type of intimate situation happen, but Paige ran. <laughs> and so she was kind of exploring like, wait, am I lesbian? Am I queer? Am I bi? Like what's going on here? So she got all dressed up and went on a little date, wind up kissing Kiki. Okay. And found out that that wasn't her thing, you know, found out that she was very heterosexual and that wasn't something that she wanted to explore. Then we see Etsy. Is it Esty? Etsy, whatever her name is. Esty is the online store. Essie, I'm just gonna call her Essie. <laughs> We've seen her try to explore her racial identity. We know that she's Asian, she was adopted, she didn't know her biological parents, and so she had white people raising her. And now she's coming into her own and figuring out and trying to figure out like, wait, where did I come from? Where's my real birthday? Where is my real biological parents? I want to meet them. I want to meet some of my family members. And so she's exploring her Asian roots. And I thought that that was really dope to see the blend of two cultures. Well, multiple cultures, actually, because she was raised by white people. She had Paige and her life. And so she had the little blackness. OK, and then she also had her Asian roots. So it was interesting to see her try to figure out all of these things. And I'm glad that they included this in this series, because that's something that a lot of people who might be biracial or what they call chant transgenerational, whatever they call it in, in, the, <laughs> in the episodes where they're kind of exploring multiple identities. So my final thoughts on this was that I'm not even going to lie. I like season one better. I'm not saying that season two wasn't good, but I enjoyed season one so much more better than this. Um, I don't know if I just felt like there was more action or more to talk about, but I just felt like the first season was something I liked better than this season. And that's no shade because I love Kerry Washington. I love Tracy McMillan. She's also a clinician. She does a lot of the things that I do, right? Doing social media is an author. She has television, books. She does a lot of the things. So I thought it was really cool that they included a lot of those social media elements with her talking and going live on social media. I'm like, that's kind of low key something that I would do. So I can relate to that a lot. And we know that this series is loosely based on her life or around some of the true events that she's had in her life. And I wonder what part is really true. Like I'm nosy enough to be like, wait, tell me for real, Tracy, which part is real and what part is embellished and made up? Because there's some things that happen. I'm like, Ooh, did that happen in real life? Because that's spicy. It cracks me up because I feel like there's no shade to Tracy, but I feel like the way that they dress Paige and her little quirky personality is really how Tracy is. I don't necessarily know her in real life, but I've seen her personality and her style on her social media. And I'm like, that kind of feels like how she would really be. And so I don't know if those were true elements, but I thought that that was interesting. They even included, I don't know if you guys remember that scene where Paige was supposed to go over to Mal's house and confess her love to him. And they were watching Family or Fiance. That's Tracy McMillan's real show, y'all, on OWN. So if you have not watched that show, go on over, check it out. It's super duper juicy. So my predictions for season three is that we know it ended with Paige's dad coming into the room and being like, um, somebody, her. And she's like, who's here? <laughs> your mama. <laughs> and then they just ended it right there. So we know that season three is going to be another whirlwind because yes, they have been working through daddy issues, but now mommy is on the scene. And what is that going to look like? There's going to be a lot of questions, a lot of filling in the holes and the blanks. There might be a lot of anger. She might need to go to therapy with them. I don't know what that's going to look like, but I know it's going to cause some issues because now her being present, the mama being present is going to trigger everybody. Paige is going to be triggered. The daddy's going to be triggered. 
Finn's gonna be triggered because now that's his real biological grandmother. Nadine's gonna feel some type of way because technically since the other lady died, Nadine is the only mama Paige has, but now that her biological mama is gonna show up, that's gonna cause some issues. I don't know, I kind of feel like Mal and Paige might get married. I, I'm projecting and I'm just giving a you know suggestion, but I do think a good guess. I would say, but I do think that that might happen. Thank you so much for watching another review video on my channel. Make sure to stick around, watch some other movie and TV show reviews on my channel, and I will see you next time. Be blessed.